Richard Visits the Dodos, a Sesame Street book based on the movie Sesame Street Presents Follow That Bird, a Random House picture back book featuring Jim Henson's Sesame Street Muppets, story adapted by Deborah Hotzig from the screenplay by Tony Geis and Judy Freudberg, illustrated by Joe Mathau. Voices and narration by Geeky Jr. and Speaky Geekies, Mr. Geeky. Big Bird was in for a big adventure. It all started at a meeting of the Feathered Friends Society. This meeting will come to order, said the chairbird. As you know, our job is to play stray birds with nice bird families. He held up a big picture of Big Bird. This sad bird is six years old and lives alone with no birds around, Mr. Owl said. He doesn't look sad to me, Miss Finch spoke up. Nonsense! He needs to be with a bird family, and I know just the family. Miss Finch went to Sesame Street to tell Big Bird the great news. You really do need a home, she said. But this is my home. I like it here, said Big Bird. Wouldn't you like to live with birds of your own kind, said Miss Finch? Wouldn't you be happier in a beautiful birdhouse with a happy bird family singing and playing happy bird games all day long? Gee, Big Bird said dreamily. That sounds like fun. The Dodo family of Oceanville, Illinois, is waiting to adopt a bird just like you, Big Bird, said Miss Finch. Big Bird's eyes glazed over. He imagined a big, happy bird family singing songs and eating bird seed, and all of them looked just like him. Big Bird looked at Miss Finch and said, When can I leave? In no time, Big Bird was packed and ready to leave. Miss Finch was going to take him to the airport and put him on the plane that would take him to his new home. But first, he had to say goodbye to his friends on Sesame Street. They were very sad to see him go, and saying goodbye was hard. Come on, Big, said Miss Finch. You don't want to miss your plane. Just walk away and don't look back. After the plane took off, Big Bird looked out the window at the clouds. Gee, flying is wonderful. I feel just like a bird, he said to his teddy bear radar when the plane landed in ocean view. Big Bird was the first one off. The Dodo family was waiting for him. Mommy Dodo, Daddy Dodo, and the little Dodos, Donnie and Marie. Excuse me, said Daddy Dodo. Was there a big yellow bird on this plane? Only me, said Big Bird. Too bad, said Mommy Dodo to the other Dodos. Maybe he'll be on the next plane. Big Bird looked puzzled. Are you the Dodos? They all nodded yes. I'm Big Bird. No, you're not, said Daddy Dodo. From now on, you're Big Dodo. Big Dodo? Big Bird said, looking more puzzled than ever. Then they drove to the Dodo's home, a big suburban birdhouse on Canary Row. Look, Big Dodo, said Daddy Dodo proudly. We have an automatic garage door. Daddy Dodo pressed a button and the garage door closed. Then he drove right through it with a huge crash. Donnie and Marie took Big Bird to his room. It was a very small room for such a big bird. He had to stoop to keep from bumping his head on the ceiling, and his legs hung out over the foot of the bed. Oh dear, he said to himself. I think the Dodos had a smaller bird in mind. Just then, the Dodos called him to come downstairs for dinner. They had big napkins tied around their necks. We think manners are very important, Daddy Dodo said. Yes, said Mommy Dodo. We always eat with a knife and fork. Big Bird watched as the Dodos picked up their knives and forks and then pecked their dinner plates clean. Soon, it was time for bed. Big Bird got into his tiny bed and thought sadly about his nice big nest back on Sesame Street. When Mommy and Daddy Dodo came into his room to say goodnight, Big Bird felt a little better. He smiled at them and puckered up his beak for a goodnight kiss. But the Dodos just shook his hand, turned off the light, and left. Big Bird kissed his teddy bear goodnight instead. The Dodos are a nice family, and I should be happy, but I'm not. So what is wrong with me? Love, Big Dodo, Big Bird to you. One night, Daddy Dodo was reading Newsbeak magazine, and Mommy Dodo was knitting a sock with feet at both ends. Donnie and Marie were quietly watching. Big Bird had been living with the Dodos a whole week, and he was bored. I know what we can do, Big Bird said to Donnie and Marie. Let's play make-believe. I'll be Snow White, Donnie said. You can't be Snow White, Marie said. You're bright yellow, Big Bird continued anyway. You can be the dwarves, but we're not dwarves, said Donnie. We're birds, said Marie. Big Bird said, I said make-believe. Pretend. Okay, said Donnie. I'll make-believe I'm Donnie, 
and I'll make believe I'm Marie, said Marie, they both said. This is fun. Big Bird just shook his head. Just then, there were two loud knocks on the door. Postcard for Big Bird, called the postbird. Big Bird jumped up, banging his head on the ceiling. He rubbed his head and ran to the door. The postbird handed him a giant postcard. Hope you don't get any packages from this guy, said the postbird as he left. It's from Snuffy, said Big Bird happily. He read the card to the dodos. Dear Bird, I am ready to come and visit your best friend, Mr. Snuffleupagus. What kind of a bird is Mr. Snuffleupagus? Asked Mommy Dodo. He's not a bird, said Big Bird. He's a Snuffleupagus. But your best friend should be a bird, said Daddy Dodo. Why? Asked Big Bird. Because you're a bird, said Mommy Dodo. All the dodos nodded. You should be with your own kind. Birds, Daddy Dodo told Big Bird. When you go to Donnie Marie's school, you'll meet lots of birds your age. Yes, said Mommy Dodo. You'll make new best friends. Big Bird's eyes got watery. But I don't want a new best friend. I have a best friend, Snuffy, and I want him to visit. Mommy Dodo said, Oh, you'll get over that. Daddy Dodo stood up and said, Now let's all go dig for worms. Big Bird cried. I don't want to dig for worms. I want to go home. All the Dodos giggled. You are home, they said. Big Bird stared in disbelief, and then it hit him. He was supposed to stay with the Dodos for the rest of his life. Late that night, Big Bird sat in his little room thinking. I can't stand it anymore, he said to his teddy bear. I've got to get back to Sesame Street, he thought a minute. It only took two hours to fly here, he said. I could walk back in three hours, easy. Big Bird packed his suitcase and wrote a note to the Dodos. Thank you for everything. I am going home to Sesame Street. Goodbye from Big Bird. Then he picked up his teddy bear and crept out. He was off. When Big Bird's friends on Sesame Street heard that he had run away, they took off to find him. Some went in cars, others went in planes. Come fly with me in an upside down world. There's so many strange things to see. Miss Finch wanted to find Big Bird too. Big Bird had a lot of adventures along the way. But finally, Big Bird was rescued by his friends from Sesame Street. Everyone on Sesame Street was waiting to welcome Big Bird and his friends who found him. He was so happy until he saw another face in the crowd. It was Miss Finch. Big Bird was afraid that she would take him away again. Hello, Big, she said. I'm sorry the dodos weren't right for you, but I can find you another bird family. He has a bird family right here on Sesame Street, Marie told her. But he would be happier with his own kind said Miss Finch. We're happy here, and we have every kind, said Gordon. People, monsters, birds, honkers, cows, grouches, frogs. Finally, Miss Finch gave in. Well, he does seem to have a lot of friends who care about him. Okay, Big, Sesame Street is your home, she said. Big Bird looked around at all his friends and smiled. You bet it is. The end. Don't forget to visit Geeky Jr. for more of the stories that you love only on Geeky Jr. and Speaky Geeky. Ask a parent or guardian if you can subscribe to Geeky Jr. today.